Hi, hello from MIP TV. And today we're going to take you on a journey of discovery. We're going to take you on a, a wonderful trip through the development, the arc of the development of transactional analysis from its very early roots to the present day. And there's no better tour guide to take us on that wonderful journey than Mr. Bob Cook, who is, who is a, and I'll say it, a, a, an authority on transactional analysis. So as we cast our boat out on this uh, wonderful voyage, where's our first port of call, Bob? Well, we have to start, Lenny. We have to start in uh, 1949. And uh, mention the originator of transaction analysis, Eric Byrne. Yes. In 1949, his first book, which was The Layman of Psychoanalysis, and he was really talking about psychoanalysis, was a Freudian. Yes. Um, and that, that was really his first ideas and thoughts, I think, uh, from those early days about the ego. Um, and then he, then he um, departed from psychoanalysis, really, um, through the, throughout the 50s, mm. and started to think about his early ideas of what he would call the ego. Um, and we all know what the ego is. It's really um, the genesis and core of personality, and created a personality model for psychotherapy, mm. if you like. And the idea that there's three parts of the self, in one psychic skin. Yes. Yeah, and uh, it's, it's interesting. We, we just recorded another video where we kind of talked about the idea of Freud. But what I want to ask, I want to kind of ask if this is a myth, because it's, it's kind of abroad. Is it true that Byrne was declined membership of the New York Psychoanalytical Society, and that is what spurred him on to develop his new idea? That's the, that's the gossip. Now, interestingly... <laughs> I went on a mission to find out where that gossip originated from. And there's three autobiographies on Byrne, and I couldn't find it in any of them. So I don't know if that's been handed down to different trainers, or but that is the sort of like conventional gossip. They got declined, exactly as you just said, and that spurred him on yes. to create his own, um, his own ideas and development of personality. Yeah, so it's an, it's an apocryphal story, perhaps. Yeah, yeah that's right. I, I, I've heard of that many, many times. Yes, yeah, so which, 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 if there's students uh, watching this, uh, tells you one of the reasons you shouldn't use Wikipedia for your referencing, because it's on the front it's of there, Wikipedia. It's, well, it's, I haven't found it anywhere. I think it's one which has been passed down in time. Yeah. Uh, but, 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 uh, but the thing is, of course, it is true that in, in 1961 he created a... A, a new model of psychotherapy. Um, and well, let's start there. So in his first book, 1961, he put down uh, the four, uh, four building blocks of a transactional analyst. And you can call yourself a transactional analyst if you adhere to these four theoretical concepts, right? Yes. A parent adult child, a theory of personality. A theory of communication called trans transaction analysis proper, proper, with uh, you know things, uh, study of transactions. A theory of script, which is an unconscious life plan, uh, played out throughout life, and games, which is to do with repetitive behaviours. If you think those four arcs or four templates, you could call yourself a transaction yes. analyst. Yeah, and that's important. He went on in 1963 to form the first International Transaction Analysis Association in America, Carmel. And he started to um, supervise early TA therapists in his methodology. Social workers, probation workers loved the first model of transaction analysis because they liked the idea of parent, adult, child. And they really loved the focus that Eric Byrne had, which was that especially with people who are quite damaged or even the neurotic population, to strengthen the adult ego state uh, instead of somebody get, getting caught up in the regressed child or the overburdening critical parent. So it provided good tools for those early mental health professionals. 
Yeah, and I think what's really interesting about that is a very, very, if you think of Freudian ideas, they mm. can be complex and quite kind of, um, you can get bogged down in them. But TA is, is quite a, it's a, I read, read somewhere he wanted to write it, and they use the terminology of the 60s in layman's terms, we'd say lay persons nowadays. Yeah. And it is very simple. And, and in fact, we, we were speaking a little, little while ago off camera, and he was saying that in his very early um, ideas, he, he said that unless you went to the, the, the board and wrote these ideas and taught it to the client, at least, is, is it four times in the session? Yeah. 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 You right. really weren't doing it properly. <laughs> Correct. And very much an ed educative model. Yeah. And probably the first CBT therapist. Yes, yeah, so that's that's a, that really struck me I, because you know everybody thinks you know TA is not subconscious process, but actually the the model is is the model of understanding our transactions and strengthening that adult ego state is is quite a cognitive approach really, isn't it? It's a, very much. I mean, Eric Byrne had great challenges with a very um, a very he wasn't that young at the time, but we'll say a very young. Um, psychotherapist coming through at that time who developed Gestalt psychotherapy and he had a lot of challenges with um, Fritz Perls right. who developed Gestalt psychotherapy from uh, Carmel which is very you know in different part of San Francisco yes and of course uh, Gestalt psychotherapy is all mainly to do deal with the unconscious and what he would do uh, he would send uh, clients to the new Gestalt psychotherapist or psychoanalyst if they wanted to deal with their unconsciousness because he was far, far, far more focused on how to strengthen the adult ego state in the here and now and move towards um, uh, quite focused cognitive changes through many of the techniques like the drama triangle, like ego grams, like script analysis. So he wanted uh, change to happen um, as soon as possible. Yes. So he would encourage people to understand how they develop their life plan, that yes. kind of play of, play of life that, that we call right. the script. And he'd, right. he'd, he'd also be interested in the repetitive behaviours that got yeah. people, that, you know, people are always falling down the same behavioural right. hole. And he'd also be really interested in trying to get people to understand, you know, where they're being affected from how they're, the child in them was affected by the parent, almost like this kind of battle of wills that sat right. inside the skin of the but, person. And to make a new decision and put the, a new script on the road uh, as soon as possible. Yes, yeah, change, change the record almost. <laughs> Very much so. And a lot of the early TA therapy, uh, its methodology was through education. Yes. So that takes us to 67 maybe 1969 and they died right and when he died in 1970 from a double heart attack on carmel bill he was he was just finishing off another one of his books which was called sex and human loving which again was finished off by somebody right. else posthumously and uh what you had one is then a void in the ta movement and you had three approaches vying for priority and the three approaches were the enduring classical approach or Burnian approach, mm -hmm. the ideas we've just talked about, developing a robust adult, um, mediating between the warring factions of the parent and child ego state and making new redecisions and putting a script on the road. Um, that was the adult ego state. And then you had um, another uh, wonderful charismatic person developing another approach, still TA, but dealing with the parent ego state. And that was are called um, the Schiffian School, or often called the Cathexis School, which is very much to do with reparenting. Right. The idea of a replacement parent, and the idea that the TA therapist would um, have a contract with the client, where the contract uh, would be something like um, the client, who was quite disturbed with that population usually, uh, would go into resident residential therapy, and um, uh, through aggression, take on board the new replacement parent of the, uh, the therapist. So it's long-term work and um, very, very, almost diametrically opposite from the approach that uh, Byrne talked about, which was cognition. So that's the second approach. And probably the one which came, won the battle 
was the um, approach which concentrated on the child ego state, which was redecision psychotherapy by the Gouldings. Gouldings. Yeah, so three schools. If we take you back to the Schiffian one, that's Claude Sch Steiner, is it? Oh no, that's that was definitely created. No, nothing. No, Claude Steiner was very much in the classical school. Right. He was the prodigal son, actually, of Eric Byrne. Sure. No, talking about Jackie Shift. Yes, Jackie Shift. And Mo Shift. Yeah. So this is. Just, just for those people maybe who are not au fait with TA, this was a move away from a more cognitive place yes. to a place where there's a more intersubjective relationship where the no. client could... No? no? No, not at all. This was about replacement parenting yes. through aggression. Nothing to do with the intersubjective space between right. the therapist and the client in a co-created relationship. This was very much what some people call brainwashing. All oh, right. Got okay. A very bad name. Got a very, very bad name. Jackie Schiff got debarred from TA in 1979, and it's the dark side of transaction analysis, really, which many, many people today would uh, really uh, never talk about. It's taught in training programs, and some of the concepts are still talked about. But the early ideas of replacement parenting or brainwashing, I would like to say are really um, the dark sides, the dark ages of transaction analysis. Okay, yeah, okay, so the, the theory that dare not speak his name. <laughs> yeah, very much so, yeah. because it, it had a terrible press, and I really fundamentally, moralistically don't agree with it. Right, so we're now moving on to the, the next model he talked about, which was the, the redecision the, the re school. Re school. Yes, this is the Gouldings, isn't it? Yeah. Yes. It's the idea that we make our... That you go back in time with the client either through role play um, where they play out the parent child um, conflicts and make new decisions so you have to go back to when the first decisions were made originally um, look at look for the injunctions look for the um, the stuck places and with the help of the therapist make new de new decisions and reintegrate it in your life and develop a new script Yes. So this is very much about looking at how you viewed the world as a child and how you adapted to the world as a child. Correct. And then realising that maybe those adaptions that may have worked in childhood to some extent now no longer are a bit defunct in adulthood. Correct. So you go back, you look where it started, and you literally like a like it somewhat like like the, the therapist is rather like a a writer on a, a, a TV series re helps the client rewrite the script so. so that they can re they can they can act in a more in, in a in a, a play of their lives which is directed by them. <laughs> yeah, that's right. And um, yeah, you're right. The therapist plays a very directive function, yes. almost like psychodrama. Uh, they go back, make these new redecisions, and then with the help of therapists, integrate them in their modern day life. Yes. Put a new script on the road. Yes. And that's cool. And that was a lot of, was that a lot based on contracts in Bob? Did I remember that? Yeah, you make contracts to go back in time. Uh, a lot of role play between yeah. the parent and the child. And um, it's, it's a wonderful approach. I mean, uh, it's very much to do, to do with going back into the child ego state. See, Eric Byrne never went into the child ego state. He believed you can make redecisions from the adult, where the Gouldings believed you need to go back to where the decisions were originally made, which is in the child ego state, yes. and make new ones. And am I right in thinking that one of the contracts may be not to go crazy? Is that is that right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, they had things called escape hatch closures, yeah. where you make decisions not to go crazy to make you know keep yourself sane yeah um you know yes you're quite you're quite right but uh, but fundamentally you go back and the idea is that you would uh put in make new decisions from the child states integrate it into your adult and have a new script in life okay and that went into the 1980s okay that takes us up then to the birth of a new school uh really the richard erskine ideas mm -hmm of integrative psychotherapy. Now integrative psychotherapy is primarily relational in nature <laughs> and it's the idea that um, the therapist's major function is to help the client integrate the different parts of the cells. In other words, to help them integrate the cut-off, fragmented 
disown parts of the self through trauma um, or through dishealth and help them uh, provide a more healthy function through integration. Yes, to, to leave parts of, that were not useful behind, look at them and maybe cut them away or take them away or, or bin them. <laughs> or yes, well, what happens in, through trauma, Yes. Uh, what you do, of course, is that you um, almost like fragment off, a bit like a honeycomb. Yes. You basically, because you don't want to feel the feelings of the trauma or even remember the incidents of the trauma, you hive it off into parts of your unconscious or consciousness, if you like, repressed consciousness, into that um, segment within the honeycomb, and you close that part off you, so you don't remember, you forget it in, 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 in uh, inverted commas, um, and you don't feel it, and the only way you probably feel it through flashbacks and later life, uh, that becomes repressed and cut off from uh, the major energetic, energetic source of the human condition. Now the problem with that, well, the good thing about that is it cuts off the trauma, so you don't have to feel it, yeah. you don't have to think about it. The problem though, in later life, is that uh, number one, you haven't got access to that energy anymore because you spend all the time keeping the honeycomb shut, mm -hmm. or that energy compartment of the honeycomb shut, and also you're driven all the time to um, to not feel, not think, or not get in touch of that that, that that part of you. So you will often be driven compulsively uh, through triggers in the present, and you won't know why you're driven that way. Yes. Yes, and, and it's a particular one. Yeah. And so if you come back from wars, suffering post-traumatic stress disorder. What they've done is they fragmented part of that horrible trauma away, but in the present suddenly they can be cycling along the road and then, you know, they hear a bang from, a, I don't know, a car better in a car or whatever it is, and then they end up on the uh, floor like a regressed child. Yes. Yeah, because, because they've, they've hidden it away and mm. the explosion has, has kind of opened the box and it's yeah. all come out. Yeah, that's right. And so, so it's really important to uh, integrate, to take back, to take ownership of the different parts of yourself um, so that you can put another script on the road. Mm. So again, it comes back to scripts, mm. comes back to scripts. Life plans. Life plans, yeah. So um, moving on from Erskine's Richard, idea. Richard Erskine's yeah. idea. Yeah. yeah. Big piece of research done in the 80s and 90s about how the relationship impacts on the therapeutic outcome correct and that and you, that lays us then to what we could called in general psychotherapy the relational turn yes the major idea that it is the relationship between the therapist and the client which is paramount mm. regardless of what model you've been trained in yes and that what really is the curative part here is that the relationship takes center stage, yes. not the methodologies. Yes, so a big shift. Yeah. You know, if you're thinking of where we started with Burn, where it was the model, it was the, the teaching, it was the going to the board, now we're into a place where the relationship sits central, central front and center. And from there, all the, all the work kind of moves, moves, moves on from it. Yeah, so, so uh, I won't say the final school, but the up-to-date school, if you like, uh, in terms of the developmental arc of TA, is Helena Hargaden and Charlotte Sills, uh, Keith Tudor, you know that name. Yeah, of course. Um, yeah. They are the sort of forerunners of this final school, which is called Relational Transaction Analysis. Yes. And the idea we've just talked about is the relationship is right at the front. And... Uh, they would use transference, but it, transference in the here and now. They would rework with transference in the here and now, not go back into history and examine the transference there. So they wouldn't go back to, you know, somebody comes in and says, oh, you remind me of my father when I was three. So if you look at classical transference through regression, you go back and examine the transference or analyse the transference. But in relational transaction analysis, you wouldn't at all. 
you would stay in the here and now and say, well, I'm not your father. Let's explore what this anger is about. Yes, and that's interesting, isn't it? Because that's very much here and now. Instead mm. of kind of going back and exploring it, saying, well, I'm not your father. Mm. But, you know, what, what's going on? Yeah. And that's very relational. And it's interesting, Keith Tudor, when I trained, was a big writer in, in the world of person-centered therapy. Of the yeah. Of Carl Ramson Rogers. Yeah, big time. Big time. Yeah. He wrote a lot of books and articles. Yeah, and, and he's written quite a lot in TA. And this school, I would say, is probably the most prominent in transaction analysis at the moment. Um, the idea of reworking the transference in the here and now, that the relationship is the security factor. Now, all these people still think eager states, theory of communication, life script and games. They're still a transaction analysts. The methodology is different. Yeah, just how it's delivered. Yeah, the style. The style. So what's next? Is there a, a new emerging idea in TA? Uh, besides Bob Cook's um, new school. No, seriously. <laughs> <laughs> I think neuroscience. Yes, I would, ag I would agree, yeah. Yeah. And maybe also looking at spirituality. Yes. Uh, um, being more, more. I don't, I don't think you can go a long way to go with that in transaction analysis. But the ideas of, uh, you know, newer science, newer biology, uh, transaction analysis. I think, that, I think that there's a book there. You know, transaction analysis and newer biology, and I think it's a real, real, probably where we'll go. Um, and I said, I think there's a big way to go in uh, spirituality as well for uh, the idea of vices and, um, you know, the, we've got the fifth dimension of the self, because uh, Erskine talks about four dimensions of self, cognition, emotion, thinking and behaviour. I think there's a fifth, which is spirituality. Um, so those are two particular areas that I would think might be concentrated more on, especially neuroscience. What would Byrne have made of this, do you think? If he, if he, well, were... he would have dropped dead. Uh, if it turned it, it's a phrase, turned in his grave, if he did thought, I think, of some of the Schiffian work. Yes. Uh, but move further on, I think he would love the redecision work. And I think, I think he would also uh, have liked a lot of the uh, ideas of relational transaction analysis. And I hope, uh, but I think his own shortcomings to do with his own script, but I hope that he would have um, embraced um, the methods of using transaction analysis in the child ego state in the early years of someone's life. Um, I, I don't know, but he certainly, as he was very in, very sharp intellectual thinker, uh, he would have embraced, I'm sure, many of the ideas of the modern age. Yes, and he was a, he was a medical doctor as well, isn't he? So the idea of neuroscience... Would oh, have, he would love that. He would have, he, I, I would imagine he would have loved that. Yeah, he would really have embraced that. And it's a sad loss that he died. He died at the age of 60. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. So young. I mean, so we've seen a, a huge, a huge number of stars and approaches in transaction analysts. And I, I, when, it, when somebody says they're a transaction analyst, Rory, the real question is, the real question is, well, okay, what type of transaction analyst? Yes. That's the real question. Yeah. Yeah. And it, it poses the question that, you know, you, 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 it would be difficult to train as a TA therapist in a, a year yeah. or 18 months, wouldn't it? It's, it's, uh, it's such a <laughs> you look on your face, does it all, Bob? Yeah, this is a, um, you know, this is a, um, a huge piece of, of theory. And, yeah, and, and the therapist has to go along with that. This isn't something they can just kind of, um, you know, Hop on, hop on the bus, and and you know they really have to engage in the th in the therapy themselves yeah. and experience it for themselves, don't they? Yeah, and they need to know all the different styles and approaches, so they know what they don't want and they know what they like, and yeah. they develop their own identity. Um, but I know to be a, a certified transaction analyst will take you about seven years, mm -hmm. hard time, in terms yeah. of training. Yeah, yeah. so it's a, it's a big training. Big, yeah, yeah. big training. And uh, I'm a relational psychotherapist. I'm very much versed in a lot of Erskine's ideas, so I know where I stand in terms of... Somebody asked me what type of therapist and I would say. I would say I'm a relational integrated transaction analyst. Yes. Um, somebody like... If you asked Byrne back in 1960, he would have said that I'm a classical TA therapist, whatever TA is there. But yeah. we've developed now 
into 2017. Well, Bob, it's, it's been a wonderful journey. Our, our ship has docked and... Uh, <laughs> And uh, to, end, uh, Odyssey. yes, to that metaphor. Um, what a wonderful trip, and, and what valuable learning. I'm sure there's going to be people watching this who will just be so grateful of you spending the time to share this. I mean, this is a wealth of, of knowledge you've shared, Bob. So, thank you very much. You're welcome, Roy. Thank you.